Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. Starting today, we'll work, we'll learn how to solve algebra word problems. Something that a lot of people have trouble with. The key here is to make sure you start out with something very simple, very straightforward, understand the language of algebra, and then gradually build on what you have learned, which is exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to start out with some very simple problem, very easy algebra word problems, first 50 or so, and then we'll do some more problems, maybe another 50 of them, uh, of the medium, uh, medium uh, uh, category, and then finally, once we have learned how to how to uh, set up an, an algebra problem, algebra word problem properly, we'll work on the hard ones. So that's the idea. Let's get going. Enough of the talk. As I said, these are very simple, very straightforward, very easy. The key is for you to pause the video each time as soon as I finish writing the problem on the blackboard, do it yourself, and then resume the video without my having to remind you to do so every single time. Do you understand? Here we go. Well, first question. How much how much does how much does A exceed B? It's a, it's a word problem, obviously. How much A exceed B? And A and B, as you understand, are variable. These are some unknown quantity. So the simplest, easiest, straightforward thing to do here is to pretend uh, pretend that these uh, A and B, these uh, these uh, these variables, have some values. Plug in some numbers. How much how much does A exceed B? If I were to ask you how much does 10 exceed 7 7? How much does 10 exceed 7? The answer, of course, is 3. 10 exceeds 7 by 3. How did you find that? 10 minus 7. That's what it is. The answer to this problem is 10 minus 7 or A minus B. There you go. There's your answer. A minus B is the answer. A minus B. That's all. Very simple. Very straightforward. Let's do number 2. By by how much does 9x exceed 5x? Again, same exact idea, and this one actually is even more straightforward. If you want to ignore the x for the time being, if you want, if you want to just pretend that x is equal to 1, in which case the question simply is, by how much does 9 exceed 5? How do you figure out by how much does 9 exceed 5? 9 exceeds 5 by 4. How did you find out? 9 minus 5. Well, the fact here is that 9 is being multiplied by some number. It doesn't matter because it is being multiplied by the same number here. So, for example, if it's 9 times 3, this is 5 times 3, whatever the x is there. The point is, how did you figure out how did you figure out how much does 9 exceed 5? You subtracted 5 from 9. That's exactly what we're going to do here. The answer is 9x, first quantity, minus the second quantity. There is your answer. The answer is 9x minus 5x or... Or, of course, in the exam, the answer is not going to be presented like this. The answer is going to be presented as 4x. Of course, 9x minus 5x is 4x. Let's do the next one. Number 3. If P is one part of Q, if P is one part of Q, what's the other? Again, as always, just plug in straightforward numbers and see what happens. For example, if P, if we pretend that P is 10, then if 10 is one part of, say, 25, if P, if 10 is one part of 25, what's the other part? Well, 25 is made up of 10 plus 15. How do you find 15? 15 will simply be 25 minus 10. If P is one part of, if one part of Q, what's the other part? The other part is 25 minus 10, or Q, Q minus P. Okay. Don't worry about the fact that I'm sometimes sloppy. Sometimes I use small letters in the beginning and then I switch to large capital letters or the other way around. Uh, I'm just not paying attention. Do you understand? Of course, in the real exam, you use the same letters. Number four. Let's, let's not keep doing, doing it down. Let's do it on the top. Number four. As I said, the first 50 are going to be very straightforward, very simple, which is why they are labeled as easy questions. If x is one factor of n, if x is one factor of n, 
almost the other. Pause the video if you have to and do it yourself. If x is one factor of n, what's the other? Again, make up numbers. Make up some simple numbers that you can deal with. For example, but when you're plugging in numbers, it's always a good idea to avoid plugging in 0 or 1. Don't plug in 0, don't plug in 1 because uh, it doesn't evolve. 0 is very dangerous because 0 times anything is 0 and 1 times anything is the number itself is not going to evolve. For example, plugging in 1 here is not a good idea. Do you understand? Let's put in 2. If 2 is one factor of, let's say, some, something times 2, how about 12? So if 2 is one factor of 12, what's the other? In other words, 2 times what number equals 12? 2 times what number equals 12? Oh, it's very straightforward. Let's call this, this other factor that they're asking, other factor. Let's call, it, let's call it y. So we know now that x times y, x times y would have to be 12. And this y, the other factor is what you're looking for, which is simply going to be 12 over x, or 12 over 2, which is... Oh, I forgot that, uh, that we had plugged in numbers. This is not... Let me erase this part. I kept working with the numbers. Of course, numbers are just for our, or for our own uh, facility, for our own understanding. We cannot work like this. So y is what we're solving for. The y is simply going to be n. 12 is our n. So here, let's substitute here. 12 was our n right here, capital N. So the answer is n, capital N, over x. Because that's what we had plugged in for x. Our x was 2. So the answer is, if x is one factor of n, what's the other? The answer is the other factor, which is what we're calling y, is simply n, my, n divided by x. n divided by x because y times x equals n. Number 5. Number 5. How far can a man walk? How far can a man walk in edge hours at the rate of k kilometers per hour? Well, that's very straightforward. If it's going k kilometers per hour, the reason why it's called k kilometers per hour is because that's how many kilometers he goes in one hour. He goes, he goes k kilometers in one hour. So if you give him two hours, if you give him two hours, he will go 2k kilometers. If you give him five hours, he will go 5k kilometers. But we don't have 2k, we, we don't have 2 hours, we don't have 5 hours, we have h hours. So in h hours, in h hours, he should be able to go, or she should be able to go, she should be able to go h times k kilometers. So that's, this, that's her rate, k kilometers per hour, and she's going for h hours. Whatever the value of h happens to be, h times k, that's how many kilometers she will be able to go. Number six. If d dollars is to be divided, is to be divided equally among I don't know how to spell among there is no u in among is there among p people so we have the amount of money which is d dollars of course we do not know the value of d we don't know what that is it's a variable it's unknown quantity obviously which is what makes it algebra. The difference between algebra and arithmetic is that in arithmetic we deal with concrete numbers. In, uh, in algebra we, deal in, uh, we work with the problem in abstract, uh, abstract sense. We don't have numbers, we have abstract values, d dollars, which is to be divided equally among how many people? Among p people. The question is very, very simple. How much does each person get? How much does each person 
get. As you can see, it's very straightforward, very simple. It's very straightforward, very simple because we're going to pick uh, plug in numbers. Let's let's, let's plug in let's plug in say say sixty dollars. How many people do you want? Plug in something something that's not that's going to be divisible by sixty easily. How about if you want three people? So if you would if you wanted to divide if you wanted to divide sixty dollars equally among three people, how much does each person get? Of course, each person gets twenty dollars. Well, how did you find it? Sixty divided by three. That's, that's that's your answer. Answer is sixty divided by three. But our sixty is what we plugged in for D. So the answer is D over P dollars. This is how we write it. D over P. Put a parenthesis around it. Put a dollar sign outside. You must have a dollar sign outside because otherwise, without the unit, the answer makes no sense. You can't just leave it as D over P. D over P what? It has no units. D over P. Hippos, monkeys, bananas, apples, oranges. Dollars, cents, pounds, euros, what? D over P, dollars. Number seven. Number seven. How many dollars will How many dollars will a apples a apples cost if if one cost forty cents? Couple of things I want you to pay attention to. One thing that I want you to notice is the fact that notice the variables that we've been using. P for people, D for dollars, A for apples, K for kilometers. What I'm trying to make you understand is that not everything in algebra has to be X and Y. So for some reason people think that if it doesn't have X and Y, it cannot be algebra and everything in algebra, all the problems in algebra have to be made up of X and Y. Use the variables in the problems that make sense to you. Use the variables that are easy to remember. If you're talking about boys and girls, don't, don't, don't plug in X and Y for boys and girls. It makes no sense. It's illogical. Use B and G. That way you don't have to remember which one is boys and which one is girls. Was X the boys or X represents the girl? I can't remember. But you can't remember because you use insane uh, variable. Plug in the area, uh, pl use variables that are sensible, that are logical. How many dollars will A apples cost if one apple costs 40 cents? The second thing I want you to understand, I want you to pay attention to is, the question makes it very, very clear, very straightforward, very specific. How many dollars it says? And yet the price is given in cents. The price of one apple is stated in cents. The question is asking for dollars. So we have to either convert this thing into this uh, price of one apple into a dollar and then start the work or figure out the price of A apples in terms of cents and then convert in dollars at the very end. One or the other. Let's do that. Let's see what we can do here. So we know one apple, right here, one apple costs 40 cents. One apple cost 40 cents. I'm just going to start from here. We're going to pretend this is part of our solution. One apple costs 40 cents or how do we convert 40 cents into dollars? Well, how much is 50 cents? 50 cents is half a dollar. How did you find it? Because it's 50 cents and if you want to convert it into dollars, one dollar has 100 cents. 100 cents per dollar. Cents is going to cancel out. 50 over 100 is half and we end up with half and this dollar over Sorry, I'm making it too much fuss about it, obviously. 50 cents is half a dollar. How do you find it? By dividing 50 by 100. 25 cents, 25 cents is quarter of a dollar. How do you find it? 100 divided by 100 cents, because it's 100 cents per one dollar, it's going to go away. And one over four cents are going to cancel out. And this dollar that you see at the bottom is going to end up on the top. You end up with one over quarter, one quarter dollar. Of course, 25 cents is one quarter dollar convert from cents to dollar, we have to divide by 100, of, co of course, it's very simple. We divide by 100 because that's how many cents uh, it takes to make a dollar. So 40 cents that we see here is same as 40 over 100 dollar. And now we have to simplify it. The zeros are going to cancel out if we divide top and bottom by 10. And 4 divided by 2 is 2 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So it turns out that the price of one apple is two-fifth of a dollar. Of course it's two-fifth of a dollar because 20 cents is a fifth of a dollar. 
20 cents is a fifth of a dollar, therefore it stands to reason that 40 cents should be two fifth of a dollar. So now we know price of one apple. One apple costs two fifth of a dollar. If one apple, one apple costs two fifth of a dollar, that implies that a apples, two apples will cost twice as much, five apples will cost five, as mu five times as much, ten apples will cost ten times as much. A apples, a apples will cost a times two over five dollars. You can leave it like this, but it looks ugly. So if you want to look, make it look a little bit nice, we, we write this as two a over five dollars. Again, put the parentheses around the whole thing, and then put a dollar sign. That's all. Continue. Let's do one more. Number eight. Number eight. What should be added to A? What should be added to A to get B? Very simple question. What should be added to A? Let's make up a number. What should be added to 10 to get 17? If that were the question, if that were the questions. We say were because it's hypothetical, of course, because that is not the question. The question is not what is added to 10 to make it 17. The question is what is added to A to make it B. It's an algebra question, of course. We're just plugging in numbers to make it easier on ourselves to understand because, of course, by converting into an arithmetic problem, it becomes very, it becomes very simple, very straightforward, and whatever logic, whatever rationale, whatever method, whatever mathematical operation that will apply, in solving an arithmetic problem is the same logic, same rationale, same method will apply in the algebra problem. Because algebra and arithmetic, they are, not, they are one and the same. They are, they, are, they are the same thing. Algebra is arithmetic without the numbers. It's with the variable, with the unknown quantities. But, but of course the rules are the same. Logic is the same. The rationale is the same because they're both math. So, how would we figure out the answer if you were asked what should be added to 10 to make it 17? Well, Obviously 7. We have to add 7 to 10 to make it 17. How do we get 7? How do we get 7? 17 minus 10. 17 minus 10. 17 minus 10 is same as B minus 10, which is A. The answer is B minus A. What should be added to A? If you have A, what do you need to add to it? What do you need to add to it to get B? That was the question. And we are saying that we need to add b minus a here, b minus a. Of course we have b minus a because a is going to cancel out and we get b, you see. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? By tomorrow I mean in the next video where we're going to pick up, where we're going to pick up from problem number 9. And as I said before, I'm, going to, I'm at the risk of sounding re repetitive, the first 50 questions that we're going to do, they're going to be quite simple, quite straightforward, easy questions. Then we're going to do the next 50 which are going to be medium. And then after that, we're going to get into some hard ones. All right? Bye now.